In this video, we'll be using QuiltBlock to set up recurring pricing. Quiller supports both one-time and recurring price quotes, so be sure to check out our other video about one-time pricing as well. You can express a recurring price in a couple of different ways. Here's the quote that I built in our video about one-time pricing. After talking some more with my client, I want to offer them a couple of these promotional items as ongoing services. Let's start with the radio spots. I want to make this into a quarterly service instead of a one-time offer. Here in the line item options, I can choose different billing frequency. Next, I want to change these social media posts to a monthly service. Now, at the top of the section, my client can see the prices of the one-time item and the recurring item separately. And down in the quote total, the recurring prices are also highlighted. If I want to add the first installment of the recurring charge to my quote total, I can do that in the Block Options menu. But let's move over to recurring prices in plan cards. I also want to offer my clients some different subscription plans for their inventory, and I want to give them a side-by-side -side comparison of those options. So for that, I'll add a new section and choose the plan card layout. I'm going to offer a choice of three subscriptions. All of them will be monthly plans, but each one has a different price and set of features. I'll add the details of my basic plan first. Here's its name, price, and billing frequency. At the bottom, I can also add a list of what's included in the subscription. This quantity field can be useful if you're using a plan card to present something other than an ongoing subscription. For my quote, I'm going to hide it. Now that my basic plan is set up, I'll clone it to create the middle plan card. And then I'll update the name, price, and included features. And finally, I'll repeat that process to create the top plan card. Cloning is great because it saves so much time. I want to suggest that my client pick the middle plan so I can highlight it in a couple of ways. First, I can pre-select it and present the quote that way. My client would still be able to make a different choice. Alternatively, I can set this card as a recommended option. That highlights it even more. I can also choose which of my brand colors to use here. And again, my client can still make a different choice. If I want to offer my client the same plans, but with annual subscriptions, I can do that too. To start, I'll click along the top edge of this section of plan cards, go into their properties, and choose Group Plans by Billing Frequency. That sets up a monthly group. Then I can click the plus to add an annual group. All of the cloning and calculation is done for me automatically. I want to add a discount to the annual prices to make them more attractive. So I'll head into the options for my yearly group and put in a custom discount. Whether you're using plan cards or tables in your quote, they do the same thing. If you watched the video of one-time pricing, you saw that you can make line items in your quote optional, or even set up a range of optional quantities. That way your client is in control of the final price. You can add the same settings to recurring line items as well. Here's a different set of plan cards where I've built the individual inventory items as separate options. I've left the quantity fields visible. Let's start with the chocolate, which is measured in pounds. I'll add an optional quantity range so my client can decide how many pounds per month they'll want. I'll do the same for peanut sprinkles. Now, for the sticks, I'm only offering one quantity, and I need that to be included in the quote no matter what other choices my client makes. So I'll head into the properties for this card, and I'll make it non-optional. I'll do the same for the napkins, but also add the optional quantity range there. Finally, let's add the bananas, and let's use the price range here. The more bananas my client buys, the lower their unit cost. I'll use a variable type card here, and we've already created the price range variable in the video about one-time pricing, so I'll use that here. Be sure to check that video out for more details. Finally, I'll move these cards around a little, so the non-optional ones are at the bottom row. My client will be able to make choices just as they can in the table style quote. And that's how recurring pricing works in the quote block. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at help at quiller.com 
or click the help button in the app.